The year was 1936, and a group of 18 dedicated members gathered in the living room of the Treadwell family. The faithfulness of its members and the church's central location within the city gave birth to its name, Faithful Central. Two years later, a site was purchased at Paloma Street, where members served and worshipped for the next 15 years. Upon his retirement in 1953, Dr. A.C. Capers passed the pastoral mantle to Dr. W.L. Robinson, a dynamic teacher, pastor, counselor, and social activist. Under Dr. Robinson's leadership, the church continued to grow. In 1960, the Hoover Street location was purchased, and a child care center and kindergarten were opened. After Dr. Robinson's homegoing in 1980, Reverend Kenneth C. Ulmer was called to be Faithful Central's third pastor in 1982. With Bishop Ulmer's dynamic teaching and preaching style, the church experienced exponential growth. By 1989, the Hoover Street location was at capacity and pointed to the need for a larger church location. Services were moved to the 1,700-seat Washington High School for two years, while details were finalized for the present campus location in Inglewood. In anticipation of purchasing this property, we marched around the prospective Inglewood site six times in keeping with the biblically inspired Jericho March. But the congregation's faith was soon tested when the property was sold to another buyer. As it turned out, the new owners never occupied the building, and two years later, the property was put back on the market. This time, however, the price was cut from 5.2 million to 2.5 million. The Jericho March was completed with a triumphant seventh time around the grounds in total silence and ended with a great shout. A new office space, the Trinity Building, was acquired in 1993 along with several other properties. Within two weeks, both morning services in the 1,100-seat sanctuary known as the Living Room were filled to capacity. By 1998, the church acquired another property, the Tabernacle, a former warehouse converted into a 2,500-seat sanctuary. The church made history in December of 2000 when it purchased the 17,500-seat Great Western Forum, becoming the nation's only African-American-owned entertainment venue of its kind, owned by a faith-based organization. In 2012, Faithful Central sold the Forum to New York-based Madison Square Garden, setting the stage for an unbelievable redevelopment of the City of Champions, including the return of the Los Angeles Rams to Inglewood, California. Come on, everybody, let's celebrate the victory in Jesus. Hey, yeah, yeah. In 2015, a third service was needed to accommodate the church's growth and provide an innovative approach to the worship experience. Faithful Central remains called, committed, and commissioned to change lives with more than 75 ministries that serve the community and continue to build champions for divine deployment. Since 1936, our family of faith has gathered together in praise and service to God.
Welcome again to the House of Champions. Well, the House of Love, that's what we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks, focus on love. This is where God is building champions for a victorious living and for a victorious loving, and you're a part of it. So glad to have you this time. L listen, listen, I want you to share this broadcast with a friend, hook up with a friend, shout out to a friend, have somebody join in with what God is doing here today. If you're on watching us on YouTube, be sure to do us a favor and subscribe to our channel and be a part ongoing of exactly the things that God are doing here. Listen, listen, last week, last week, uh, Valentine's Day, we talked about love, 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 love. And, and we did a name that tune game. Remember that, name that tune. I played a couple of notes. You can name it in one note, two note, whatever. I'm gonna play a couple of notes this time. Uh, I hope I am. And uh, you see if you can remember or if you know this tune, okay? Uh, let me just set it up for you. Uh, this might, let me just say, this is not Jesus keeping near the cross. So now those of you who may not know this, all right, but if you recognize this, uh, then it's going to ring a bell in your mind and uh, we're going to see where God takes us with it. It's about love. It's about love. It's about somebody who needs love and asks for love and wants love and uh, uh, it's about love, okay? See if you can name this tune in one note. Here we go. All right, all right, go ahead, put it in the chat. You got, you smart, you got it, you got it. Okay, 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 here we go. Can you name this tune in two notes? Here we go. Okay, 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 you got, you got it, you got it? Come on, jump off in there, jump off in there. Put it in the chat, put, put it in the chat, here we go. That's two. See if you can name that tune in three notes. Here we go. Y'all got it that time, didn't you? you? Got it that time, didn't you? Here, okay. What, what, here, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Two, three, go. Come on, you you got it. You got it. If you know this, you just know how old you are. Now, that song, that song, recorded by one of the champions of this house, champion of love, champion of love, Mr. LL Cool J. Ladies love, hence, champion of love, right? Okay, so listen, LL Cool J, the master of love, has been nominated for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Now, we want to vote him in this first time around. I don't want him to be on no cane talking about love, love, love on a cane. We want to vote him in the first time around. Here's what, you to, here's what I want you to do. Go to vote.rockhall.com. One more time. Vote.rockhall.com. Vote.rockhall.com. We want to vote him in. We want to support him. We want to make this thing happen. Love the Lord, faithful member of this house, faithful member of this house of champions, a champion of love. Vote.rockhall.com and let's celebrate this great troubadour of love who not only understands the horizontal love, but today, today, we're going to go and we're going to look at this vertical love, not just our love for one another horizontally. Okay, okay, that, that's enough, that's enough, y'all. That's enough, that's enough, that's enough, that's not, yeah, okay. Okay, we, 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 we going up this time, we going up this time, okay? Uh, we gonna do this with running tape, mistakes and all, okay? Last week, we looked at vertical love, romantic love, friendship love, and how God blesses friendships, and how God blesses even romantic love. Today, we want to go up. We want to go up. We're going to look at this vertical relationship of love, God's love for us and our love for God. We're going to look at the power of the greatness of the love of God. Now, listen, part of what I'm going to say is in the book that I wrote called Passionate God, Passionate God. You can get it on Amazon.com. You can get it on Barnes & Nobles. The key is right now, you can get it in Kindle, Kindle, Kindle. You can get a Kindle version, you can get an eBooks on Nook version, okay? Passionate God, get it? Part of what I'm gonna say today about the greatness of the love of God is in that passage, is in that book. You get it, it'll bless you. Now right now, listen, I want you to join me in John chapter 21. John chapter 21, we're gonna set the stage for what we're gonna talk about today. Remember, last time we looked at horizontal love, today we're gonna look at, in our focus on love, 
the vertical dimensions of love. God's love for us and our love for God. That's what John 21 talks about when Jesus had an encounter with a man named Peter. And he asked him one simple, profound question. Let that be the question that dangles in your mind as we gather around the Lord's word and as we gather in the Lord's presence, the Lord of love. Here it is. John 21, verse 16 says this. And Jesus said, Simon, son of John, here's the question. Do you love me? Underline that, highlight it, put it in italics, put a circle around it. Do you love me? And he answered, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus says, take care of my sheep. Here it is. Do you love me? The answer, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Come on, let's pray and let's worship this God of love. Father, we thank you that you are the God of love, that you are the God who is love and who gives love. Now, Lord, prepare our hearts and our minds to love you more. In your name of love, amen. Well, in love, let's worship. This simple song just gives praise to God. Let's love on him this morning as we declare, Lord, I love you. I adore you with my whole heart. I will bless you. Come on, song says this, says, Lord, I love you. Come on, sing. I adore you. With my whole heart. With my whole heart. Come on, I will bless you. I will bless you. Oh, that's it. Come on, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. I adore you. I adore you. With my whole heart. With my whole heart. I will bless you. Let's do that one more time. Say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. I adore you. I adore you. With my whole heart. With my whole heart. I will bless you. Oh, you got it. Come on, say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love That's it. I adore you. I adore you. Say, with my whole heart, with my whole heart I will bless you. I will bless you. Says this. And we sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. Come on, everybody. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love Come on, I adore you. I adore you. Sing with my whole heart. With my whole Come on, heart. I will bless you. I will bless Say, you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love Come on, you. I adore you. I adore you. Say, with my whole heart. With my whole heart. Say, I will bless you. I will One more time. Say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love Come on, I adore you. I adore you. Say, with my whole heart. 
Come on, say it. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, praise him in your praise. Praise him. Hallelujah. Everybody say hallelujah. continue to praise the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come today thanking you, Lord, and we come today praising your name and thanking you for life and that abundantly. We thank you for what you're doing, Lord. Let us grow to be the people that you would have us to be. Let's be loving people, caring people, and sharing people. Lord, we say this prayer in the name of Jesus and all the blessed people of God said, amen. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. As we're giving the Lord a hand of praise, we're entering into our offering time, but we're gonna continue to praise him. The Bible says in Psalm 150, verse six, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. And then it gives the commandment, praise the Lord. When we praise the Lord, we're always praising him. There's several ways of doing that. First is in song, we've been worshiping. We do that in song, also in dance. But then if you can't do that, you can also just praise him with your hands. But another way of praising the Lord is also in giving. Another word for praise is actually honor. And one of the ways that we honor the Lord is first by putting him first. We put God first. The second is we're cheerful when we give. And the third is, we are always thankful. God has blessed us with so much and it could be worse. So we always look at how we're thankful. So we always put God first, we're cheerful givers, and then also we're thankful for what God has done in our life. If you believe that, can I have an amen? As you're preparing your very best gift and you're doing that with praise on your lips, there are four ways in which you can give. The first is you can click it. Right now in the chat, there's a link that you can click on, or you can always go to our website at faithfulcentral.com. And there'll be a drop down menu where you'll be able to see where you can tithe. You bring back to God what he's blessed us with. The second is you can do an offering. And then also there's a special line item. It's called pastoral care. That's where you sow in the bishop's life, just as he's sown in yours. And the second way is that you can text it. Text the word give to the number 833-321-3222. And the third way is there's an app. We have the Faithful Central app. And you can either go to Google Play or the App Store and download that. And the fourth way, there's a very special group of you out there. You either wanna mail it to us or drop it off. Well, our address is 333 West Florence Avenue, Inglewood, California, 90301. We wanna thank you for being faithful in your giving. But also, we've been praying for you all week. 
And one of the areas we've been praying for is that God would open doors in the area of jobs and new businesses. If you've been blessed with a job this year, we, there's a link that we want you to click on and let us know about it because we want you to know that God is still in the blessing business. Can I have an amen? As we celebrate Black History Month, it's important to look back at the brave men and women who faced off against prejudice and bigotry in order to share their unique talents with the world. Whether they were involved in civil rights, politics, science, technology, sports, or music, African-American history is full of innovators. We honor our trailblazers in the fight for freedom. He was born into slavery on the eastern shore of Maryland to a, an enslaved woman and to a white man, and it was presumed that his enslaver was his father. He would write thousands of articles over his career, and really to be a black owner of a newspaper at that time was a big deal. 1852, the Ladies' Anti-Slavery Society invited Frederick Douglass to give a speech about Independence Day, and they invited him to do that on July 4th. Well, in protest, he gave the speech on July 5th. Frederick Douglass gave a scathing speech. He said, what to the slave is your 4th of July? And what he's saying is, how can you, how dare you ask me to come and talk about your high independence, to talk about your liberty? There were times where he was very frustrated with President Lincoln and how slow he was to move toward abolition. But Frederick knew that the Civil War was about bringing down the institution of slavery. And so Frederick's importance during this time was he, he pushed Lincoln, he agitated. Frederick Douglass was the first African-American nominated for Vice President of the United States. He was the first African-American U.S. Marshal, um, first African-American Ambassador and Council General to Haiti first African-American recorder of deeds in the District of Columbia, and the list goes on and on and on. The Faithful Central Bible Church app helps you stay connected and keeps you up to date on our ministry activities. With the FCBC Ministry app, you can save events to your calendar, receive important messages, give your tithes and offerings, and more. To access our app, you'll have to re-download it. It's free and available in the Apple or Google Play Store. Let's stay connected. For more information, visit our website at faithfulcentral.com slash app today. The Passage at Faithful Central Bible Church is an amazing program. I'm Shamika McCoy, and my son went through the program in 2018. Um, he learned uh, life skills, becoming a young man, and I love that it also has Christian concepts as well. It's a program at church. So he was able to come back as an alumni and mentor the young man free will all on his own. I enjoyed the program so much that I came back as parent counsel to volunteer my time, talent, and training. For over 20 years, Rites of Passage, a faith-based mentorship program, has impacted the lives of boys between the age of 12 and 15. Our program provides a network of God-fearing men dedicated to teaching, encouraging, and preparing young boys with the skills they need to make good choices, serve their community, and honor God. Parents, to sign up your son and men who are ready to become mentors, go to our website at faithfulcentral.com ROP. The program runs from March through October, every Saturday. Orientation is March 6th at 9 a.m. God loves you. Let's, let, let's look at the vertical dimension of love, God's love for us. Um, some of what I'm going to say is in my book, Passion of God. You can get that uh, Kindle version or ebook version from uh, Barnes and Nobles or Kindle version from Amazon. But it's in, it's in the book called Passion of God, Passion of God. And, and, and I zoom in on Jeremiah. Come on, come, 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 come with me. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 3. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 3. One of my favorite verses. I love this verse. I love it. I love it. Here we go. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 3 says this. And God speaks and God says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Now watch this. Therefore, 
with loving kindness. God, I love it. I have drawn thee. <laughs> Let's go to work. Here we go. I have loved you, God says, with an everlasting love. Therefore, he says, because it's everlasting love, I, with, with loving kindness, I, I have drawn you. Now, now listen. It's another version that says, God is love. John writes, John says, God is love. Now, listen. Not just God does love, but God is love. The, the, the consummate, all-inclusive declaration and description of God is that God is love. Everything, everything that flows from God is a manifestation of his love. It, it, it is, it is the, the driving dimension of his character. It is the revelation of uh, the unchangeable dynamic of God, the person of God. It's his everlasting love. From, from, this, from this emotion of love, from this, this, passionate, this passionate emotion of God, uh, all other emotions flow. Uh, uh, mercy is part of it, and grace is part of it, and uh, patience is part of it, um, provision is part of it. All of the other dynamics, uh, uh, peace, shalom is part of it. But it flows out of this um, unmovable, unshakable, unchanging, unconditional dynamic of the person and love of God, his everlasting unchangeableness. I don't even know if that's a word. But he says, I love you with an, an everlasting love. I, I love you. L listen, get this, it'll change your life. God says, I love you with a love that never changes. I, I, everything else that we see God doing, everything else that we read about God doing, uh, 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 how God moves, is an outworking of his everlasting love. His, this word for everlasting, uh, it, it's a Hebrew word that means, uh, it's related to the Greek word eon. In other words, I love you for eons. And, and the idea is, God, I love this. My love for you has no beginning and no end. If, if God is love, then God's love began when God began. But if God had no beginning, then his love had no beginning. If God's love is like God who has no ending, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, then God's love, he says, is everlasting. God is not saying to you, I used to love you. God is not saying, I just started loving you. God is not saying, I love you ever since you. God is not saying, when you, I love you. Not what he's saying. God says, I love you eternity past. I love you eternity present. I love you eternity future. I have always loved you. I do always love you. God loved you enough to bring you to this program. You could have been channel surfing and, 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 and platform surfing. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, if, 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 you're, if you're watching it, watch this. If you're watching a day and when you woke up this morning, you didn't plan to be watching. Um, you, you found us. Go ahead. Put, put, put it in the chat. Put, put it in the chat and say, uh, shout out from such and such a city. Shout out from such and such a country, whatever it is. Uh, um, I found you, but put that, I found some, some, something like, something like that. Because, because what I want you to see is you're not here by accident. God, God loved you to this broadcast. God, God, God loved you uh, to this service. The fact that you are here is a demonstration of God's love. Now watch this. He says, he says, uh, with an everlasting love and therefore with loving kindness, I have drawn you. God, I love your word. God says, I love you, and, and I love you so much, I have drawn you to me. 
Uh, it, it's a couple of pictures. First of all, it's a picture of someone who is being tugged at and, and, and pulled, pulled in a certain direction uh, on a rope or on a string or connection. He says, I, I, have, I, have, I have tugged at you. I pulled you. I, I pulled you. I pulled you from where you were to, to, to where you are now with me. I pulled you from over yonder to over here. I pulled you from being in that to being here with me. Hey, have you, 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 you ever thought about, you ever thought about some places that God pulled you from? You, you ever thought about some situ situations that God pulled you out of? God says, God says, I've pulled you. I've, I've drawn you to me because of my love. Now, now you know, you know. I tell you something. I, I'm just thinking about this thing. He 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 doesn't tug. He doesn't pull too much on Sundays. Uh, come on, come on, come on, go, go, come on, go with me now. He 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 doesn't. So this is me. This this is my, not your. This is my testimony, not your testimony. He, he doesn't pull tug. You know, too much on Sunday mornings. Uh, long about now. Yeah, I'm 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 pretty much you know where 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 I'm found every Sunday, long about now. Uh, he doesn't have to pull me too much. Uh, 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 I had, had a professor who said we order our lives around the rhythm of our relationship with God. My rhythm was about every seven days su Sunday morning. You know where to find me. So so he doesn't have to do too much put, tugging and pulling. Now 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 uh, he he pulls a lot on Friday nights, doesn't he? Uh, uh, um, he pulls a lot on Saturdays, doesn't he? Uh, he, he? He pulls a lot when I'm in the wrong crowd, doesn't he? He, 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 he pulls a lot uh, when I'm in the wrong place with the wrong person, doesn't he? Um, he, he has a, he has a uh, after the benediction pull. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, this ain't your testimony, this is my testimony. In other words, he, he has a after you leave the saints pool. He has a after you take off your choir robe and close up your hymn book pool. Yeah, he, he, has a, he has a pull you from the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong person in the wrong, bit. well, you, you, you know what I'm talking about. But, but he, 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 he tugs, he pulls at my heart. He tugs and pulls at my mind. Um, my wife and I, a couple of days ago, celebrated 44 years, 44 years. Uh, in those 44 years, he's had to pull me from some places that I looked too long. Pull me from some places I wanted to stay too long. He, 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 because his everlasting love didn't stop loving me when I was there. Didn't stop loving me when I wanted to do it. Didn't stop loving me when I looked at it. But, but he loved me enough to keep pulling at me. Not your testimony. It's my testimony. Um, it, it, it's another picture. Interesting. It's another picture of, uh, of fishing. The fishing, to contemporize a little bit, well, then fishing. Uh, 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 a while back, my son and I were fishing in in, uh, in Montana, fly fishing in, in Montana, and and the guy who was our, our instructor teaching us, he was teaching us how to fly fish, you know, and it's it's it's, it's very dramatic. I love the way you, you you know, and, and you cast it, you know, and and he says now now when when the fish when the fish bites, he says, you know, and you snap and and you hook him, he says, uh, start reeling, reel, reel, reel in, and then he says, now let him run, you know. Yeah. And reel, reel in, reel in, and let him run. You see, uh, and 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 you could feel the tug, you know, of of the fish pulling against your your your, your line. And he says, he says, just hold on and let him let him run. And then reel him in and let him run. And reel him in, and let him run. Reel, reel him in, let him run. And and then of course you 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 kept shortening the the, the line. And eventually you you held up this fish. You held up you, you he he was caught. He was caught. Not because you brought him in right away, but, but, but you let him run for a while. Oh, somebody says <laughs> these where I'm going. Have you ever, has God ever just let you run? Matter of fact, have you ever felt like you were running away and, 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 and God knew just when to reel you in and pull you closer? God says, I have drawn you. I, um, 
I've, I brought you to myself. Even after those times and seasons where you've kept running. Uh, his love. His everlasting love. It's, it's, it's overwhelming. His, his love for me. It's, it's never ending. His, his love for me. It's, it's, it's reckless. It's reckless. His love for me. It, it, it chases me down. It fights till I'm found. He'll leave the 99. I know that I can't earn it. I can't deserve it. But um, he loves me. <laughs> there's, there's no shadow. He won't light up. God, I love it. There's no mountain that he won't climb up. He, 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 he's coming after me. Uh, no wall he won't kick down. No lies about me that he won't tear down. He's, he's coming after me because he loves me with an everlasting love. Let's worship God for this love then let's come back and look at the next kind of love. Come on.
Come on, everybody, let's sing it. My hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Sing my hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Oh. In this, our focus on love, let's look at our love for God. As, as we, as, as we uh, expand our focus, expand our view, and focus in on love, what about our love for the Lord? There, there is a, there's a, a, a challenging, uh, thought-provoking question that is raised uh, in a conversation between Jesus and and Peter, you know, P Peter, uh, one guy said Peter is the is the disciple who had a good foot in mouth disease. He was always known for putting his foot in his mouth, but he was a great man of God. And in this dialogue with Jesus, a question is raised that can challenge all of us. In chapter 21 of John, chapter 21 of John, come on, let's look at it one more time. Chapter 21 of John, beginning at verse 15. Watch the flow of this, of this text, beginning at verse 15. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Do you love me more than these? And, and Peter, Peter re responds, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And then Jesus said, feed my lambs. Next verse. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Do you love me? Second time. He answered, yes, Lord, you, you know that I love you. And Jesus said, take care of my sheep. Next verse. Here we go. Third time. Third time. He said, Simon, do you love me? Third time. Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him, for the third time, do you love me? Peter got kind of ticked off. And I, I, I just answered you, man. You gonna ask me that again? And he said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. Now, let's, let's unpack that, uh, that dialogue. dialogue. Two, two keys, two things leap out at us. First of all, the name that Jesus used when he, uh, when, when he opened up the conversation. No, notice, if you, if you will, notice how Jesus addresses him. He, he knew him by name. So the first thing is the name that he used. He said, Peter, Peter didn't call him Simon. We know that in other places he's called Simon Peter. In other places he's called Simon. But Jesus called him Peter, not Simon. Jesus called him by his new name. Jesus gave him the new name. He says, no, you, you're, you're not Simon anymore. Now you're going to be Peter. And here's the key. 
The word Peter, the name Peter means rock. So Jesus opens this conversation. Watch this now, very important. Rock, the rock, rock, not, not, not Johnson, not Johnson, not Rock Johnson, but, but it says rock. You are a rock. Now here's the key. Jesus addressed him. God, I love your word. Jesus addressed him based on who he was becoming. You missed it. He, he didn't call him Simon, didn't call him Simon. He, he was about to answer like a Simon, but Jesus called him Rock. Jesus called him Peter. Jesus called him uh, uh, based on the prophecy that Jesus had made. Jesus, Jesus prophesied and says, you shall be a rock. I, I know you're a Simon right now, but you shall be Peter. Here it is. God, I love it. God loves us from where we are to where we're going. You missed it. Uh, he, he, he addressed him as rock, but he talked to him while he was still a Simon. He, he called him rock, the rock, the rock, the rock, because Jesus knew who he was and he also knew who he would become. He knew who he was and he knew who he would become. The, uh, his, his old name was Simon. Simon, the word Simon means a pebble. Uh, uh, it's almost like a, a, a big chip, a, a little pebble. And it's a pebble that symbolizes something that's not stable. You, know, you kick around a, a, a pebble, you know, uh, uh, you can roll a, a pebble. Uh, it's easily dislodged. Uh, it, 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 it can roll back and forth. Uh, he was a Simon. He was waffling back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But Jesus said, you're Peter. P P Peter, that word means a rock, a stable rock. It, it, you, you, you can't kick against a rock and move it. A, a rock is stabilized. A rock is mass, has mass. Uh, a rock is significant in its presence. You, you can pass by a pebble, not, pebble, not even know it. But when you come to a rock, you know that's a rock. Listen, because God loves you and God sees you, not only for where you are, God, I love your word, but for where you're going, not only for who you are, but for who, what you can become. He sees you in your right now, and he sees you in your not yet. He sees you in your present. He sees you in your future. He sees you where you are. He sees you where you are going. He sees you for what you can be in him. So he called him Peter. Now, 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 notice the question, the, and he asked this question three times. He, he asked this question. He says, Peter, do you love me? Do you love me? Now listen, listen, listen. He asked him three times, do you love me? Matter of fact, the third time, Peter got kind of ticked off. Uh, uh, he said, do you love me? Now. Those three times were symbolic of the three times that Peter had denied him. Uh, I'll give it to you one more time. Jesus asked him three times uh, because three times Peter had proven that he did not love him. Uh, three times he had proven that his love was still rolling like a little pebble. Three times he had proven that his love was not stable and solid like a rock. Uh, Ashford Simpson, solid as a rock. He, he had proven that his love was waffling and, 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 and wavering. And so, and so, I love this. And so when Jesus says, do you love me? Do you love me? Uh, uh, Peter said, oh man, you know I love you. Now, now, watch this. Because these are two different words. I talked last week about the different words of love. These are two different words for love. Jesus says, do you love me with a godly, uh, uh, one guy says, with a hundred percent love. But, but when Peter answered, Peter used a different word. P P Peter, didn't, Peter didn't use the same word, do you love me with a hundred percent godly love. Peter said, Peter said, oh, you know I love you, which really is kind of like, it's, it's the word phileo, phileo. It's like a friend, told you talk, talk, talked about this last week. It's like a, a friendship, like a brotherly love. He says, oh man, you know I like you. You, you, you my bro, man, you my, do, you my road dog. You, I got you, man. You know, we, bud, we buds, man, we buds. Got you. <laughs> Jesus said, that, that, that ain't what I asked you, man. 
So he asked him again, same word. Do you, do you love me? Agape love, godly love, strong love, consistent love. And, and he asked him again. And, and this time he said, same word. Oh, he said, oh man, you know, I got you, man. I got you. But notice what he throws in. Ah, don't miss this. When Jesus said, do you love me? Peter's answer was, oh, Lord, you know I love you. Ah, oh, <laughs> there it is. You know, Lord, you know, you know I love you. And then the third time, the third time, when he got kind of ticked off, uh, Jesus then switched words. And instead of using the agape, the godly, the full, the strong love, Jesus said, okay, let, let me talk your language. So you said we buds, you, you said we're friends. He said, he said uh, Peter, uh, are we really friends? Peter said, Lord, you know everything. You, you know I love you like a friend. Ah, there it is. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Jesus comes down to his level. And Jesus uses the word that he uses, which is not the word for what one writer says. This was not the word for 100% godly love. Uh, one guy says, this is 60% love. It, it, it's, it's real love, but, but it ain't all the way there. In other words, it's not on the level that Jesus loved him. And so Jesus, watch this now. Jesus comes down to his level and said, okay, okay. Oh man, are, are we buds? Hey man, are, are, are we BFFs? You know, we, we best friends? But the key is that Peter said, Lord, you know. Now here's, here's, here's what I want you to see. He was right. Because Jesus did know. But he asked the question three times because he wanted Peter to know. Not just to know that he knew. But he wanted Peter to know for his own sake, for Peter's sake. Let Peter face up to our real relationship. God, I love your word. You, 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 your love is still down here. You proved it because you denied me. You, you proved it. Because you flaked out on me. You proved it because you were embarrassed of me in front of certain people. You proved it because you told me face to face that you did. But when you got around other folk, you denied me. You turned away from me. You downplayed it. You said you didn't even know me. And so, and so Jesus called Peter's attention to Peter's real love. Uh, I'll stop right there for a minute. Let, let's go to the deep end of the pool. Some of you really like the Lord. As an old song, I really love the Lord. No, no, no. You say, I really like you, Lord. You, you, you like him. Some, some, some of you, some of you have been flirting with God. Mm -hmm. you, you know, a, you know, a flirt, a tease, you know, some, 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 some of you, some of you just been flirting with God, never making a real commitment, never developing a full relationship, just, just flirting with God. So, some, some of you have just been dating God for the special dates. You know, like you got a special occasion coming up. So uh, uh, if, if it's a, if it's a uh, black tie dress up affair, you call this girl, this, this sister over here. But if it's just a hang out and go bowling or you can go to a movie, then you call this girl over here. You, it, it depends on what the situation is that, that, that determines who you ask. And some of you, some of you are just dating God. It depends on the situation, see. If, if, if it's a blessing on the table, you know, let's roll. Come on, come on, come on with me, God. Let's do this. If it's a getting a better job, come on, God, go on this interview with me. If it's something that benefits you, uh, uh, that places you above everybody else, come on. But you, you want to you look, look good with God on your shoulder, with God on your arm. Uh, uh, J Jesus is your trophy date. Depends on the circumstances. 
And and some of you, and some 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 of you, some of you, some of you, uh, you you are dating him uh, uh, in secret. You 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 don't ever take him out in public. Oh, oh, you good, you know, when, when behind closed doors and all that. But but in front of others, you deny him. In front of others, you don't you never speak up for him. In front of others, you don't claim him. You know, you you know, you ever, you ever been around somebody? Uh, uh, I think it was Bill Withers had that song that said, you act different when, when somebody else is around. You know, um, you look different when he passes by. Your, your, your demeanor changes. Um, how are you in your love for Christ in front of other people? Or, or, or are you so um, casual with your relationship with God that even when people see you with him, uh, they say, who is he? Uh, and, and what is he to you? Come on, Bill, help me out. Peter, Peter was, was, was good to roll when it was just one-on-one -on -one with him and Jesus, but, but when it called for him taking a stand in public and taking a stand for other people and defending his name, he backed off. So Jesus said, do, do, do you love me? Do you love me? Agape, 100% love. He said, Lord, you, you know, I, uh, you, you, you know it all. You, you, you really know. You know. And, and I came to tell you, he really knows. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about who you call, call for in a jam. I'm not talking about uh, who you call for just in a pandemic. I'm not talking about who you look to uh, uh, when, when things are going bad. No, 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 no. I'm talking about a commitment relationship. No, no. I'm not even talking about how religious you are. God is not so interested. And, and the, whole, the, the whole life of this ministry of Jesus was coming against the religious institutions of the day. He, he's not, you've heard this before, he, he's not interested in religion, he's interested in a relationship. And so, so Jesus' confrontation with Peter was about relationship. Do, do you love me more than these? And, and, and it's symbolic of saying, do you love me more than all this other stuff? Jesus is saying, where do I rank? Where do I rank? Do you love me more than these? Which of these ranks higher than you? Part of it, uh, uh, th those were fishing boats, the, the context. I said, do you love me more than these? There were other disciples. And so maybe he was saying, do you love me more than your career? Do you love me more than your, uh, your reputation? Do you love me more than these? And, and, and maybe, may, maybe Peter was saying, oh, Lord, I love you more than these. The, 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 I, I know they don't love you as much as I do. But when it came down to standing in relationship before the realities of the world, Peter backed off. Three times. Three times that we know of. Now here's the hook. And yet, Jesus loved him. God, I love your word. And yet, Jesus said, I'm going to turn you into a rock. And yet, Jesus says, I can still use you. And yet, Jesus says, I'm not turning my back on you as you turn your back on me. And yet, Jesus says, you may have denied me but I declare my love for you. <laughs> that, that's an old song. Oh, I forgot who made this one. Uh, I think this may have been Supremes or uh, Diana Ross. And it says, I'm going to make you love me. <laughs> you, you know, some, sometimes, sometimes God loves you to himself. Sometimes, sometimes he loves you. He, he lavishes his love upon you in such a way that you begin to know that all of your blessings come from him. 
Sometimes he loves you in a way wh where you say like the disciples, Lord, where else can we go? I mean, wh wh what options do we have? You know, no, uh, uh, and sometimes it's like, like what James Cleveland said, can't nobody do me like Jesus. So Jesus says, I'll start where you are and I'll take you to where you're going to be. Because this same, God, I love it. This same Peter would later write in, in one of his letters, St. Peter would write, uh, th this love, this love of God, this love, this love, love covers a multitude of sins. One version says, love covers a multitude of faults. Um, and, and, and God takes us to that place where we say, Lord, I love you. It, it, it's an interesting when you, you hear two lovers, and it actually doesn't matter whether they've been married, married or been loving each other for a while. Uh, there, there's this tit and tat that always go together. One says, I love you. And, and, and you, you, you know what you're supposed to say next. You know, you, you know what you're supposed to say. Uh, I love you. And you, you know what you're supposed to say next. I love you too. Matter of fact, matter of fact, if they take too long, to give the right response. Whoa, 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 slow your roll. I said, I love you. D no, don't be hemming and hawing, hawing and uh, uh, duh, duh, no, 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 don't, don't, don't be stuttering up in here now. No. I love you, Jesus. I place no one above you. You're the world to me. I love you. You're, you're, uh, you're my all in all. I love you, Lord. <laughs> I, I hear it. I hear, I hear that, that little song, that little Sunday school song, that little Sunday school song. Um, yes, Jesus loves me for the Bible tells me so. And <laughs> the, 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 he said so. And, and, and I, hear, I, I hear the other song. Oh, 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 how I love Jesus. Why, why, why? Because he first loved me. Can you say that? Can you say that? When you receive Christ as your Lord, you're saying, Lord, I love you. You're not saying, Lord, I understand it all. You're not saying, Lord, I'm perfect. You're not saying, Lord, I got it all together. You're doing what the Bible says in the book of Romans. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, not whosoever shall have it all together, not whosoever shall have never messed up, not whosoever shall has got a little Peter in them who has turned against him and denied him and messed up in the past. But I wonder, can you say, can you say right now? Listen, 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 listen. You, listen. You are, are listening to this program because God loved you here. And he's saying to you, I love you. And I just established that when that word, that phrase is said, the proper response is, I love you too, Lord. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ into your life as Lord and Savior, here, here's real simple. Um, at the end of the service, I want you to go to the chat room and there's going to be someone there to get you more information about this. But here's very simple. If you've never said this, I want you to put it in the chat. I want you to put this in the chat. Real simple. I love you, Jesus. Don't even just say, I love you, God. That's a whole nother discussion. No, no. It, at the end of the day, it comes down to Jesus. There's no other name given, among men, uh, given whereby we must be saved than the name Jesus. Oh, I, I know there's a higher, no, not a higher being. I love you, great uh, creator of the universe. No, 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 no. Got, got to get more specific than that. I love you, Jesus. Some of you, this is the first time you've ever heard, ever heard it put to you just like that. Think about that for a minute. And God brought you here from all around this country, from all different parts of the world. And if you've never accepted Jesus the Christ as your Lord and Savior, in a moment, I'm going to ask you to put it in, the, in that chat room and just simply say, I love you, Jesus. Phase one. Phase two, at the end of this broadcast, end of this service, 
want you to go to the chat room. Somebody's going to give you more information. Follow up with that. We're not going to drill you, not going to ask you three times like Jesus did, Peter. But we'll give you information about your next steps. And so as we, as we, as we uh, 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 musically declare our love for Jesus, put that in the chat. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus.
and you may be watching right now and the word of God has gripped you. you, you the word was, was just for you. And, and I want you to now to, to contemplate what decision you're gonna make next because this decision I made changed my life. It was a decision to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. It was a decision to join the church. If that is your, if that is your, your, your thing now, listen, do it. Don't wait. Click that link. I have friends right now waiting for you in Zoom to celebrate you, to walk with you. They're not going to hold you long. They just want to connect with you on your next steps. And I, listen, I want to pause for a minute and just welcome you to the body of Christ because the angels in heaven are rejoicing. I want to welcome you to the family of champions because I know some amazing places to work, grow in the word of God. And this is the place right here at Faithful Central Bible Church. Listen, you want to join the family of champions? You want to be a part of the body of Christ? Click on that Zoom link. That's the best decision you'll ever make. God bless you.